Apple's latest version of macOS, called Sonoma, was just unveiled yesterday at WWDC 2023. And today I wanna to go through a hands-on demonstration of some of the key new features. This year I was actually pleasantly surprised by the amount of features that came to the Mac. Now these aren't groundbreaking things like the redesign in macOS Big Sur, but they are some nice creature comforts and some new additions to spice up your Mac just a little bit. And right off the bat, the place to start is the lock screen because the Mac lock screen has been redesigned to look more like the iPhone and the iPad. We have a translucent font up at the top with a touch ID or enter password field being moved all the way to the bottom. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of having your icon all the way down at the bottom of the screen. I think it looks a little bit unbalanced, but let's go ahead and unlock and get started with today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by ClearVPN, the VPN that I love to use. ClearVPN comes from MacPaw, the creators of CleanMyMac X, who have been a longtime supporter of the channel. They've reworked ClearVPN for a streamlined, user-friendly experience that emphasizes the most important features. It uses top-tier encryption and employs a strict no-log policy, so no online activity or personal info is collected or stored. See, ClearVPN believes that your data is private. So they offer a secure browsing module for free to all users. ClearVPN is the VPN that you can trust and you'll love using. So whether you wanna secure your browsing experience, change your location, or access streaming services from anywhere in the world, ClearVPN has painless setup in seconds. It is so simple to use, it is really, really fast, and with plans starting at just $3.50, it's affordable as well. And you can use promo code Elmiani with the link in the description below to save even more. 30 days free, then six months for $22. So why wait? Check out ClearVPN today. I'm pretty proud of that. That was a smooth transition. Almost as smooth as Apple's new transition wallpapers. That's right, those fun slow motion drone shot screensavers that have been on the Apple TV for a little while are now on the Mac as well, but with a fun twist. When you have these set as your screensaver, your lock screen will slowly animate as the drone shot plays through. And when you unlock your Mac, it'll slowly come to a halt and become your desktop wallpaper. If you go to the wallpaper settings, there's a bunch of these available by default. There's landscape categories, there's cityscape, there's underwater, earth, and you can actually shuffle between them. And that gives it a little bit more of an Apple TV feeling because on the Apple TV, it rotates between all of these. But do be aware that these are fairly large downloads. If I go over here and try to download one of these, you'll notice that it's gonna take a couple of minutes to download this high resolution video. I mean, it's gotta be a pretty big file size if it's high resolution enough to be your desktop wallpaper on retina displays. So that's definitely a fun feature, but it doesn't add a ton of functionality to the Mac. This year, Apple is going all in on widgets. That's their big thing across iPad OS, and macOS. They're more widgets and they're more useful. I've got a couple of default widgets set up here as well as this memory manager from iStatistica which allows me to see where memory is being used. But if you want to add more, just open up Notification Center, scroll down to the bottom, and hit Edit Widgets. From here we are presented with quite a number of default widgets in different size and all you have to do is grab them and drag them onto the desktop. You'll see we have these guidelines if you wanna snap them in near other widgets. I could also just put it randomly in the middle if I felt like it, but it intelligently will snap into a grid pattern when you're near other widgets, which I think is a nice touch. And if you're wondering whether you can fill an entire desktop with widgets, yes you can. Absolutely, go for it. I don't know why you would want to, but you can. But one of the features that works really well straight out of the gate are the updates to FaceTime. FaceTime has a ton of potential, but it has been really buggy for the past few years. So it's pretty bold of Apple to start introducing some very powerful new features, but they seem to have pulled it off, to be honest. First up are FaceTime reactions. This is a fun way to add some emotion to your FaceTime call or your FaceTime meeting. And there are a number of different reactions that you can do that are all blended into your environment. It is very slick, but they're also automatic. If you do two thumbs up, it will automatically give you a little fireworks show. Now I did notice some of the occlusion on my thumbs was a bit off, but very cool that it's able to recognize and work pretty much every time. One of the more powerful features though is presenter overlay. 
This is activated when you start screen sharing, and what it will do is separate you from the background and put your screen in the middle of it and off to the side. This is a super cool effect, and it condenses the amount of screen real estate taken up in presentations, and it also means that you can interact with and point to things on your presentation. Very cool idea, and honestly, has been executed really, really well. Even picking the windows to share is simplified dramatically. Now, if you're on a FaceTime call and you hover over the green button on your window, you'll see an option to share that screen. That is super useful and it removes an unnecessary step that was there previously if you wanted to start screen sharing a window. Now, one area that Apple was a little disappointing at WWDC this year was with Siri and artificial intelligence. Obviously, with ChatGPT taking over the world, it seems like, you would think that Apple would focus on some improvements to Siri, but they basically did no such thing. And instead, what we got was this inline typing prediction feature, which is a machine learning on device thing, as is pretty much everything. It's like their favorite word nowadays. But the idea is that as you're typing, you will see suggestions in line and you can press the spacebar or the tab key, as I found out, to complete that prediction. It's very similar to what's been in Gmail for a while now, with one key exception, and that's that it doesn't really do very much. In my testing, I could only really get it to complete a couple of letters at the end of a word, or maybe a connecting word, if I was lucky. Now, Apple claims that over time, your devices will learn the common phrases you use, so maybe it will improve, but for now, it was kind of mid. In a similar vein, there's new Safari features. If you start typing like sports results into the search bar, you'll get a more intelligent result right at the top here. Now it seems like Apple's gonna be pulling from like NBA or ESPN for sports and Wikipedia for most other things. It didn't seem to do a ton in my experience, but again, this is just initial testing. But Safari itself does have a number of updates, and the big one that Apple talked about is profiles. You go to Safari Preferences, you can click New Profile, and choose from a number of symbols and colors. The idea here is that you could sort of switch modes and have different bookmarks depending on what you're doing in your day. And it's definitely a cool idea, however, in my testing it was weird, and it didn't really work right. It showed up just fine in the top left corner of the screen, but when I tried to switch out of the work profile, it was just bringing up my tab groups. So I was like, wait a minute, is this a profile or is this a tab group? And I tried a bunch of different things, configuring it around. It is, it's, it's very weirdly implemented right now. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I might be doing something wrong, but it is very confusing. What's not confusing is Safari's new web app features. This one is super simple. When you're on a website, you can go into the file menu and you can add it to the dock. You can choose the name, of course, but the icon is chosen for you from the website's metadata. And then you've got a website that just lives down there like an application. When you click it and open it, there's no Safari toolbar. It is just a standalone application. Now, a lot of the new features for macOS are shared amongst all of Apple's platforms. So, for example, iMessage, you've probably seen a million iOS videos talking about that. It basically works exactly the same on the Mac. There's new search functions, there's stickers that you can put pretty much everywhere, and they kind of rearranged the app drawer at the bottom of messages. So there are some features like that that are shared across devices, but the Mac does get a new game mode feature, which is intended, I guess, for like Apple Arcade games. This one I'm very interested in because it seems minor at face value. It gives your games priority use of the CPU and GPU and tries to minimize background tasks. But what I find quite interesting is that it actively decreases the latency on your AirPods or a Bluetooth game controller by dramatically increasing the Bluetooth sample rate. That I think is a really cool feature. I haven't had a chance to test it out because I don't have a game controller with me, but I do think that's a really nice bit of attention to detail. And it seems like Apple might be focusing a little bit more on gaming on the Mac. After all, they did have Hideo Kojima come on WWDC and talk about the new Death Stranding port. We've also heard news that the very popular game Stray is coming to the Mac. It's possible that macOS Sonoma is ushering in a new era of increased Mac gaming, and I am here for it. But unfortunately, what I'm also here for is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm definitely curious to know what you guys think the coolest new feature or the worst new feature of macOS Sonoma is. Let me know all of that in the comments down below, and I will see you guys very soon.